year, the situation for women in Afghanistan has gone from bad to catastrophic. Step by step, the Taliban has shut down all avenues to a normal life. Women and girls are barred from schools and universities, of mosques and even parks. The United Nations Security Council said this week that it was alarmed by the latest edict, a ban on women from working for NGOs, forcing several major charities, including Save the Children, to cease operations in the country. Well, for more, we're joined by Hosna Jali, Afghanistan's former Deputy Minister of Women's Affairs. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. It must be absolutely heartbreaking, uh, yet somewhat unsurprising for you to see what has happened to women and girls in your country over the past year. How would you explain it? Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I think that the new, I mean, it, 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 it is part of the, the news headline because it hit the uh, major cities. But if I would say that the same, quite similar policies have been implemented in provinces since they took over, um, so yeah, absolutely, it's it's not shocking for anyone. Uh, and uh, we're expecting that it's going to come. And of course, um, the women we're talking about are, you know, the younger women grew up with some measure of freedom, didn't they? This is not like the situation back in the 1990s where women didn't particularly know much freedom. The, the women who were who were having their education taken away from them, their work taken away from them, um, they grew up with relative freedoms, didn't they? They did. Unfortunately, um, they make majority of the population. Um, fortunately and unfortunately. Unfortunately, because they did not have this experience of the Taliban and this is their first time. And I, I, I think they find it even more difficult than us to cope with it. But at the same time, fortunately, because they are the force to push back the Taliban. Um, so, yeah, that, that that's the post 9-11 generation. And they make majority of the population of women in Afghanistan. Uh, just last week, um, Saudi Arabia criticised the Taliban uh, for what it was doing. I mean, Riyadh is not exactly known for, for being uh, progressive on, on women's rights, yet it said that what the Taliban was doing was un-Islamic. Um, why does the Taliban seem to have this visceral hatred for women? Um. I would say, first of all, Taliban has a very specific definition of women's role in society. And that's, I can't say it's tradition, traditional, because it is against the traditions of Afghanistan, I would say, as an Afghan woman who's raised and born in Afghanistan. Um, they don't believe in education. They don't believe in women's role in society, in politics, in economy, and in culture. But at the same time, I would say, um, I mean, that, that's my uh, take on, on, on the issue that Afghanistan's women has always been. I mean, historically, they have always been the forefront of any civic movement. Uh, yes, it's not recognized, but they have been. So I would say that um, the Taliban are more afraid of women than men because they, are, they, they have been leading movements in Afghanistan in the past. So be it political, be it civic movements. So I would say that might be part of it. Nevertheless, there has been this kind of step-by-step -step destruction of women's rights. Um, first, it was schoolgirls, uh, then it was the uh, the teenagers. They couldn't go to university. Uh, women were, were taken out of the workplace. Why do you think the Taliban just didn't impose all of this all at once as soon as the, the U.S. coalition forces left the country? I think initially they have been, they have had this ambition of, uh, being recognized internationally, but at the same time, it would have created locally a chaos that it would have been difficult for them to manage. So that's also why they imposed it gradually so that they can manage the chaos uh, or the, the, the public response to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure that they would be um, very, they, they're still ambitious, but they would be very hopeful about the international recognition anymore. Because there are policies that they don't want to compromise, and that, of course, is a red line for the international community to, to recognize them. What is the best way forward, then, do you think, when it comes to the international response? Uh, should the Taliban be shunned and isolated and, and sub subject to sanctions, or should there be some attempts at engagement? 
Uh, well, it's it's so difficult when it comes to engaging with the Taliban because on one hand, Afghanistan is not self-sufficient economically and we have humanitarian crisis on the ground and a lack of engagement, particularly when it comes to the NGOs, which um, closed down due to as in, in response to um, the Taliban's latest decree on their employment in international NGOs. I think it affects the normal public. But at the same time, I am not sure how... Um, I mean, the, the international engagement can be with the iso isolating with the Taliban without engaging with the Taliban. So it is pretty difficult, but I would say that the sanctions and um, the red signals to the Taliban in terms of their legitimacy, that should be there. And the sanctions has to be on the Taliban themselves, has to be imposed even more. But if I would say the sanctions, I don't mean only the uh, lack of engagement with the Taliban, because that also affects the normal public. I would say individuals who are part of the Taliban's network, the Taliban sympathizers out of Afghanistan, particularly in the region, in Turkey and UAE and in other countries. And those networks of the um, businessmen and investors who are supporting Taliban, by all means. I would say if, if there would be a sanction on them, it should be a strategic sanction on individuals who are supporting the Taliban from outside Afghanistan. Well, it's, it's a, a, a terrible outlook. Uh, we can only hope that things improve uh, for Afghan women and girls in 2023. Hosna Jalil, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for having me.